Hi everybody, Mike Fisher for Tactical POV and uh, finally, finally getting started with some uh, new content for you guys. Sorry it took me a, a month here, a month and a half here, uh, trying to get some content out for you for the new year 2017. Been uh, very busy as I said before, behind the scenes trying to get some other things set up to carry me through this year. So, uh, kind of carried over from last year. But uh, what I want to talk today it's a two-part deal this is part one and as you see in the title it's called letting go of my ego and uh, I'll explain it briefly here this part of it here is kind of a brief discussion and then uh, part two will be a it'll be the actual demonstration here and this is really we're getting some really unseasonable unseasonably warm weather here uh, from where I am right now in, in month of February so yeah, hopefully it should be dry enough here coming up this weekend and uh, <clears throat> I can actually get out and uh, get a, a video demonstration of what I'm talking about but what I mean by let going letting go of my ego is the fact of uh, well I'm, I'm basing this on a couple of questions a few questions were pretty much the same uh, that I got from uh, some viewers and uh, some people uh, friends of mine on Facebook and um, asking me when I was carrying my Glock 30S, why did I go back to my Glock 19? And uh, I said I was going to do a video, and I tried to really get to it last year, last fall, actually, when I, when this question came about. And just that's just too swamped with my daytime job and everything else that I do. So, um, but I am going to get to it though. And what he meant, what he wanted to know, is why I went back to my 19, and it's because I learned. Over time, shooting my Glock 30S, the entire realm of concealed carry efficiency, or basically being effectively efficient with the firearm, and everything else plays into effect what I mean by that. And, and what I mean is that shooting a 45, I have no problem shooting a 45. I shoot a 45 just as accurate as I shoot my 9mm. So, but size and dimension of the said firearm itself I learned that it was a problem due to my physical stature as far as my hand I have a pretty thick hand short thick fingers and a thick hand and with that Glock 30s the biggest problem that I had with that particular firearm itself was the size of the grip the grip was just with the thickness of my hand and the size of that grip the reloads were an issue and that was my biggest problem with it was reloads so for the for speed of reload and for that sake I, I had to say you know what I have to make sure that I am effectively efficient with any firearm that I use and that I carry that means I don't want any type of hang up at all and uh, I'll do another video here talking about gear. Your gear is just as important as your firearms. So, as I was saying, the, the, the grip itself was really, really hindering my the effectiveness and the speeds of my reload as compared to my 9mm. So, therefore, that was the first and utmost reason why I went back to carrying my 9mm. Two, shooting my 45 at distance. And that's rapid fire at distance for controllability of it because it's a subcompact a glock 30s it's a subcompact short frame slim slide and it's in a subcompact design with that 45 caliber the dimensions of the gun and basically the makeup of it was not effective at distance it's basically saying my accuracy pattern was spreading wider than I was comfortable with. So even though my pattern would be at this at 21 feet at rapid fire, it, to be effective was not good enough for me as to where I want them closer and tighter. And this is in the realm of uh, combat shooting. So, you know, you want to be as accurate as you can in a combat shooting aspect. Again, you gotta remember, it's not marksmanship here. You want to be effective with good accuracy to make those initial shots count. So, as I said, with my Glock 30S, the shot pattern at 21 feet was farther, spread wider than my nine millimeter. 
So obviously, I'm so you know, because there might be a time where I might have to shoot at distance. I might have to shoot, you know, two to the body, one to the head, at 21 feet. So that being said, I want to be as accurate as I possibly can. So as you know, carrying the 45 caliber, God knows I love the 45 caliber. I love my 1911s. Still got a place in my heart for them. I, I wish, you know. I honestly wish I had my old Kimber I used to have. I wish I had that back, but I obviously sold it and put that money towards the business. But I always have a place in my heart. But as I as I said, the more I progressed over the time, over years and everything, I said, you know what? I have to let go of my ego carrying a big 45 ACP caliber and the gun itself because I love that thump. I love that stopping power. I love everything about it. But it is not tactically efficient for everything that involves concealed carry in the entire aspect and realm of concealed carry the whole purpose it's just not effectively efficient for me now if it works for you great if a you know a subcompact works for you in your world and you shoot it shoot it by all means shoot it if if uh, 40 caliber works for you also god you know shoot that too you shoot whatever it works for you but as you got to remember everything plays into effect your gear the whole everything gear firearm clothing everything what goes on to conceal carry it all has to be all in one it all has to be efficient it all has to be effective and if you find a problem with one being effective or hindering you in a certain place and that was my biggest issue was that it was hindering my my reload speed i had to let it go i can't have that i can't have that hang up dealing with that firearm and the issue I have is a big issue with the with the reload speed I would have to two hand strip the mag from the grip pull it then grab reload and go I want to drop that mag when I hit that mag release button I want that thing to drop it the process as soon as it's dropping out I'm pulling my next one and slamming it in boom and keep going that's what I want so this is like I said part one of that discussion part two I'm going to run a demonstration with it here coming up soon. Hopefully, I can get to it here soon, next week or so. If not, definitely stay tuned for part two. And like I said, I want to apologize for taking so long to get content out to you guys. promise you I'm going to work on that a lot more this year because I've got things in motion to where I can start rattling out some good content for you this week or this year, I should say. So this is Mike Bishop for Tactical POV saying that being armed is a mindset, not just a physical condition.